Salutations everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiserreich playing as the Dominion of Canada. Now, I've never done this before, and like normal, like the start of every campaign, or almost all my campaigns, we start with the custom game rules, in which we see that everything's going to be default. I have no idea what's going to happen, and I kind of like it that way, but let us begin. So, why am I playing Canada? Well, I ran a poll on my Discord server for the month of, was it, August 2020? So, I decided, you know what? They, this nation, the Dominion of Canada, has won, so we shall play it and attempt, and hopefully succeed, in restoring our birthright and going back to the British Isles eventually. Along the way, we're going to go and encounter a lot of enemies, a lot of problems, and a lot of things that won't be very pleasant, especially to our neighbor in the south. But the mods I'm using, obviously, are Kaiserreich. Uh, player the Peace Conferences, State Transfer Tool, Colored Buttons, and Colored Events, which is in the description below. The link is in the description, but you'll see which mods are in there. Uh, Kaiserreich Beta, point one four point one. I'm sure I will read this. Totally. So, this is our... Well, let's take a look at research first, because that's easiest to do. Industry, tried and true Kaiserreich stuff, just general Hoi 4 stuff in general. Well, general Hoi 4 stuff would be general, so yes, mechanical computing would be very good. And, let's see, I ought to think about our navy. Uh, what do we have researched? Cruisers, because I'm going in completely blind, I have no idea what we have done, what we can do. Uh, it's ahead of time, so we got, we're good on carriers, which is a plus in my book. I like that a lot. I might actually develop a lot of dockyards eventually. Oh, we only have seven? Jesus Christ, I know it's Canada, but come on, man. Oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to grab this. I want to make good cruisers. I'm thinking about making a lot of good destroyers as well, but we'll see what happens. Let's see our army. It is not ideal. I'll take you guys out first. Why do we have militia? Uh, uh, we've got some marines. That's not bad. I like the marines. We have a thing of tanks, which is okay. And honestly, oh my god, what type of template is that? Could be worse. Could be a lot worse, though. Uh, throw them over here. Throw them over here. There we go. Those are motorized as well. We'll fix up these. We'll fix up everyone here, actually. So that's good. Uh, do this. Do this. That'll be the main army. Throw them there and throw them there like that. Cool. Field Marshal. You shall be Montgomery. Mm, he's politically connected, which I don't like, but it's only minus 10%. Ooh, Flask. Flask? Fast Planner. Charismatic. Uh, he is level 4. Let's go with Krerar. However you pronounce his name. We're going to train our soldiers. We're going to need some light tanks because I want to get involved in the American Civil War because we're going to need America. One of the Americas. Either New England or the Pacific States. Maybe even the federal government, but we'll see what happens. As long as the CSA does not win, that's the main thing. And to do that... Oh, Auchinleck. He sounds very familiar. I wonder if he's in TNO. But anyways, uh, let's see. Infantry. Uh, infantry would be a good guy. Hello, dude. Marines shall be led by Odd. Oh, he's a jungle rat, which might not be... Bad. Engineer, river tech, and uh, that would not be bad. And do Andrew. Does it upgrade already? Fortress Buster. I've not looked at the Navy yet, which is probably a good thing because I could be very disappointed, but you never know. Uh, Jungle Rat, Trickster. Yeah, might as well do that one. Any other upgrades? I don't think I've ever seen Jungle Rat before. Uh, well, I mean, well, I guess I have, but it's so rare, so. <sighs> I want to build up civilian factories. And there's things here that we could take that could really hurt us, or really do well. I know, like, with con the conscription thing, I'm probably going to screw that up. But let's see what we got. We got some guns. We got some artillery, support equipment, and fighters. Light tanks that are good. Close air support. Okay, we can't afford all this stuff. Get rid of the close air support. We won't have the range for that. Naval bombers would be good, though. Uh, Ship-wise, let's take a look at our, our fleet. Before we let time go on. Because things take time to get through. That's not bad for task forces, for subs, Tom Phillips. Looking pretty good. Do that. How much fuel do we have? We get uh, daily gain 105. That is not ideal. Holy cow. We get... Uh, that's an okay carrier. Let's see. Let's look at the design. It looks like a converted battleship one. Uh, oh, good lord. What the heck? That's not bad for screens. That's just all screens, though. Uh, just combine them here. 80. Jesus Christ. 89. What the heck? All in a... Mm, mm, this is what I'd not want to see. Uh, do that. 10. There we go. Something like that. There you go. Uh, I'll put you right here. You guys. Put you right here as well. And we'll divide it up maybe one or two ways. More. One. Two. And we just need that much. Go. And do it one more time. 
all under one fleet. I could be focused on two fronts, but I'm really just going to be focused not against Japan, but the Union of Britain, uh, save one, two, there you go. There you go, cool. Put you both here. That'll be fine. I want to say train, but we don't have any fuel. <laughs> so, level five, not bad positioning, retreat chance, I wouldn't be bad spotting speed positioning. Uh, choose Andrew Cunningham. Do that. Train for now. You guys train as well. That'd be fine for now. We're going to run out of fuel very soon. So, it's not bad. I want to emphasize carriers. Oh my gosh. How many different types of carriers do we have? Oh, how bad is this carrier? How bad? Oh my god. All you have is just space on the top and an engine. Like, I know this costs more, but... Mmm... Shnikes. Get rid of these. I'll upgrade this once we have more naval XP. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. Let's see, what other trash we got around here? Uh, that's a higher number, so we're gonna take you. I like bigger numbers. Revive. This is like your armor. Uh, that's a capital ship. I don't really like using those too much. Actually, cruiser hulls. Oh, actually, you're like a battleship. Yeah, you're actually more like a battleship than anything else. Uh, actually, come back to this. Which one did I get rid of? Armored cruisers. Breed red nuts. On these ones, can we throw? No, I don't want that one. Armored cruisers. Uh, uh, cruiser hull. This is the one we probably want. Yeah, here we are. This one I want to bring you back. My bad. Proof cruiser hull. Light ship. Light ship one. Proof light ship. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, let's see. Goodbye. Uh, they're the same number. I don't care. Large sub hull. Interesting. Very interesting. 18 torpedo attack versus 14. So goodbye. I'm sorry. I'm taking a while with this. Just we just got to make sure that we set ourselves up to be appropriate. So we got destroyers. We got light cruisers. We got like a light battleship. Heavy normal battleships or battle cruisers down here. And dreadnoughts, so those are like super heavy battleships, and then we got carriers. I'm just gonna go ahead and invest in this. It's not great, but it's actually not that bad. This could work pretty well for us for now, so. And outdated equipment. This is not outdated. Uh, I purposely made sure that this is not outdated. Um, the Mockton class? Yeah, it's not outdated. Like, it's, it's totally fine, so. Alright then, let's see what happens. Hope we'll get some sort of event. Oh, the current situation. Let's read about this. So, it has been 11 years since the collapse of the UK in 1925, and in that time, the king and the remnants of the British government, and over a million of the empire's best and brightest and wealthiest, have fled to Canada, with the clear expectation that an invasion would soon be launched to take back the home isles from the syndicalist upstarts. It quickly became evident, however, that the syndicalist position was stronger than anticipated. Early for forays were rebuked, and the last decade has seen the Union of Britain become solidified and entrenched. The exiles, as they're called in Canada, have meanwhile been left adrift, determined to take back their homeland, but facing the political reality that this may never happen. One day, though. Direct the exiles. Uh, the British exiles are prominently placed within the Dominion of Canada. Once here, King George V has the ability to give them direction regarding where they should commit their efforts in supporting him. So, will direct the British exiles to either increase their own influence, increase the King's popularity, the country's political power and stability, or build an offsite factory. Each of these lasts for a year or requires a year to take effect. In all cases, but the British exiles increasing their own influence, a level of their influence is expended. Ooh, ooh, so influence of the British exiles is moderate and moderate. Maybe we don't want to do that? Let's see what happens. So, taking a prominent places in the Canadian government and with it, within its corporate sector, and they stand ready to support King George over the next year, over whatever means he does. Influence of the British exiles will increase at the end of the year. Add modifier British exiles. They should assist the Canadian government, more political power, which kind of is nice. Canadian industry needs assistance. You get off map factory. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do, choose. Oh, let's get some more influence. Why not? Let's try that. And home isles. Eventually, we gotta get Return of the King. Retake the home isles. And let's see. Yeah, eventually. We'll declare war on them. All owned states are currently controlled. Also, let's complete the focus project. Plow, legation cities. We can probably close that one. Close that one. Same time go on. And we've yet to choose a focus yet. So, the current situation. Oh, while initially welcomed with open arms by Canadians, a notion might be felt. It's a long-term arrangement that has been an increasingly unpleasant one. Fingers are pointed and blame, blame laid on those who were deemed responsible for the collapse and the subsequent inability to rectify matters, and resentment against exiles who were seen as a higher class in the Dominion, as well as above the law, has been growing. In 1931, a year after their election, the minority government of R.B. Bennett and his conservatives collapsed, to be replaced by Mackenzie King and the Liberals with a promised focus on Canadian sovereignty and keeping the British government in exile at arm's length, rather than acting as if nothing had changed in the relationship. Only to be expected, and now we have uh, Anglo-French tensions, which hurts us quite a bit, as well as the Great Depression. We're only in a slight depression. We need the King's speech to continue doing this. Uh, Return of the King, which we obviously can't take. Americans at war. Oh, yeah. 
Current situation this year at Mackenzie King and the Liberals are nearing the end of their term and on top of the tribulations of the Great Depression, there is growing criticism that little progress has been made in resolving the political situation. George V lies on his deathbed charging the exiles and the conservatives with bringing the empire back on track as government clashes often with the Liberals and the Canadian public appears split between those who would see matters come to a head and those who would prefer to abandon their ties to the Crown and the French exiles in Africa both. The upcoming election appears as if it will be the most div divisive in Canadian history. Goodness gracious. And we are out of fuel already. Assassination, assassination of President Kerensky and observer rights on legation councils. When the British Empire collapsed in 25, the then governor of Hong Kong invited troops from Germany and other great powers with a presence in China to occupy the British concessions to protect them from the Chinese. This sparked a convert conflict between the Americans, Japanese, Germans, which was finally ended by the Americans in 28, when the legation cities, officially known as the International Mandate for Chinese Concessions, were formed. As is the case throughout the world, though Germany makes up makes use of our imperial possessions, we are still theoretically maintain ownership of them. So it is in China, where our extensive concessions guarantee us a seat on the Legation Council. By that same coin, however, the Germans' refusal to recognize a government in Ottawa as a responsible British government denies us a vote in Shanghai. As a guarantor of British interest in the Far East, Canberra is generally responsible for the active maintenance of the Chinese concessions, and our disagreement allows us to focus on regaining George V's crown or throne. Should Australasia fall into instability, however, we should be obliged to take their place in the cities. We deserve a voice in Shanghai. Well, we'll see what happens. I just want to get a new king, man. We need a new king. Hmm. As we're training. And looking at our stuff, which actually isn't too bad. Now, we've got to get more army XP so we can actually edit these divisions because some of them might be okay. we got infantry division 2, which is okay. Infantry division 1. We need to make some divisions, actually. Is okay. The division 3, though. Why? Not sure why. The RCMP Brigade Military Police, which is great. Royal Marines. I'm definitely going to use a lot of Royal Marines. Motorized, we have to edit. Garrisons are... Okay. Armor Divisions actually are looking a little better than the other stuff we're making. Uh, for now, though, this Infantry Division isn't worth making. Division 2 is probably the one we want, though. Now, I want to make a very, very strong army. Not a big army, but just a very, very strong army. But the King... George V is dead. In the last several months, King George has been plagued by illness and his health has been failing. This act has been kept, of course, this fact has been kept from the public to keep up with appearances while treatments were attempted, but it seems all was for naught at uh, almost midnight yesterday. The king died following a bout of severe fever. His eldest son and heir apparent, Prince Edward, has inherited the throne as Edward VIII and is expected to address a nation within the month. An official coronation will take place in several months' time after an official mourning period for King George has been observed. The king's speech focus has now been unlocked. Thank God. So, Edward, Prince of Wales, will be coronated king as a Canadian political landscape consists of two main factions, one led by Liberal Prime Minister Mackenzie King, and the other led by Conservative R.B. Bennett and the exiled British aristocracy. The Empire will be awaiting his radio address after the coronation, where he'll be expected to declare his government's direction. Oh boy. Oh, he's kind of handsome, isn't he? But, the total is charger, the people must reject this madness. Yes, yes. The envoy from Transamur. Today, an envoy from the petty military junta of Transamur has come to visit His Majesty King Edward VIII. In his speech, the envoy informed us about the King George V's previous support of Colchok's in 1925 unsuccessful coup in Petrograd, and assured us that this time the ru rogue admiral will triumph. However, he once again requests support from the Entente. We owe Colchok nothing, but maybe he's not that useless. How should we answer? We'll get everything. He'll get everything he needs. We lose some guns. Limited support will be enough. He's just going to be ah, what, what could be hurt with just giving him a few hundred guns? Oh, that's what that's what hurts. It's only hundred guns. We won't feel that in a few days, right? So political power, less stability, more war support. Focus on offense, and we're led by the liberals. Oh, with Mackenzie King, is that right? Yeah. No, Edward VIII or whatever. Tories are still pretty popular down here as well. Maximists by Tim Buck, OBU, syndicalists, and now we have the war in India. Do we have any planes? Into our fighters. Any planes here? Ah, oh, we do have a few planes. Nice. But not many, obviously. Trash them. I don't want to know where they're at. I know they're not that far away, but whatever. Oh, uh, that's fine. Bombers. We'll definitely use you. Strategic bombers. Probably not. The Fifth Anglo Afghani War. Who cares about Afghanistan? We want to make sure. They are in the Anton, right? So we want to make sure these guys actually win. So let's send up some volunteers. I. Oh, we can just join the wars. Yeah, let's go and just join the war then. Ah, Sorellians elected in France. Interesting. We're not fighting on their side. I'm not actually going to send anything to them. But what I'm going to do is hopefully send them some planes. Which will be nice while they're deploying. Black Monday. Mine got. Mine got. 
Black Monday hits Canada. Just when we thought we were almost through the doldrums of the Great Depression, the German economic markets have experienced a massive crash, which has come to be dubbed as Black Monday. While the Canadian economy isn't as tied to the German markets as some, the ripples have been felt throughout the world, particularly in the U.S., a market we are particularly dependent upon. This setback is difficult to take, though Prime Minister King has assured the country. We will make it through this, just as we have the dock years prior. Now is the time for us to join together and work as we have never before. I could click on that, but I'm not going to. Uh, you guys actually... Oh, we gotta do that. King Edward comments on war. King Edward has commented. Uh, made the rounds of Canadian newspapers commenting on the war with Afghanistan, saying this won't be the end of it. The old world or established at the end of the Great War is now falling apart, and the empire must be ready. We cannot put our heads in the grounds and wish things were the other way than they are. For one way or another, the wars overseas will come to our shores. The king's comments were seen as a tacit support for R.B. Bennett and the conservatives, and many Canadians are reluctantly agreeing. So the king's first address. As King Edward prepares his first radio address to the Empire, he must consider what his message will be. His Privy Council is, of course, urging him to promote the cause of retaking the home isles. R.B. Bennett, the leader of the Conservative Party and the official op opposition, suggests that he will use his platform to endorse them for the upcoming election, saying that he they will serve the cause of war far better. Others, meanwhile, suggest that supporting the current Prime Minister and government will go a long way to mending fences and maintaining stability, though it could also be seen as tacit endorsement of the Liberal Party position. War, Conservatives, or Liberals? Does this affect me? How does this affect me? Senate, Imperial Conference, the Privy Council, the Crown's Corporations. Oh my goodness. That looks really good. I want to do that next. Crown Corporations all over the place. Expand the Air Force. Doesn't look too bad. It looks okay though. Trans-Canadian Air Force or Airlines. Fast production costs. Looks awesome. The Night Watchman. Uh, this stuff looks interesting. I've never seen this focus tree before. I'm, this is the first time I've ever looking at it. So, hmm. Not bad. Nuclear technology. Overhaul the Navy. Yes, we probably want to do that. That looks pretty good. State of the British Fleet. Uh, oh, yes, more dockyards. Yes, 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 yes. Expand dockyards. Lots of dockyards. Address the Army, which we will have to do. Preparations for war, which will be good. Eventually, the Fuller Plan. Mobile Warfare. We're, we're going to go... Hmm, should I go with tanks or mobile war? Or superior firepower? Uh, let's see. Anything here? Armor bonus. Division organization, which is not bad. Better guns, better bullets, better army. Let's see... Less supply consumption, but better production costs. But we don't really have the industry for it. It's quite unfortunate. War propaganda, not bad. The new warfare. I like. Prefer, I prefer this one. Definitely prefer this one. Uh, it requires ca Canada's motor industries for better guns, better bullets. So either one. Contact the loyalists. Interesting. The Americans at war. Cool. I'm not really sure. Quebec in flames. The Montreal Conference. Supp suppress them. Invoke the War Measures Act. Oh, crap. I don't know, man. Like, prepare the nation for war? So, the conservatives say they, they will cause the nation to emphasize war. The liberals, the prime minister, say he wants more stability. I'm not really sure. Just prepare the nation for war might be good, might not be good. Hmm. Just prepare for war. I don't want to get, I don't want to deal with that. But let's go to the Crown Corporations. We need to get out of this depression. Enterprises founded and run by the state, so-called Crown Corporations, allow us to develop and maintain access to strategic resources and expertise that might otherwise be, be neglected or ignored by the market. Sadly, not every industrial magnate sees the use of investing in wartime resources, at least for now. But we'll see what happens. Uh, king Edward calls for war. Cool! So, in his radio address, the king has spoken to the nation and electrified it. From Vancouver to St. John, from Toronto to the Arctic, Canadians everywhere buzz with excitement after hearing a charismatic and forceful speech denouncing syndicalism and the king's pledge to finish a war that his father began and finally reclaim Britain. His message, message was received as a tacit endorsement of the British exiles in Canada, and a clear call to begin preparations for war, despite the current Liberal government's more tentative policy on the matter. We must liberate our brothers of Britain, we get war support, influence of the British exiles increase, authoritarian democracy and social conservatism, Sounds good enough to me. I don't know. We definitely gotta get, make sure we got enough war support here. Or not war support. Well, we need more war support. But make sure we get our plans here. And Austrian Empire withdraws from Italy. Poland declares a republic. Is the old order fading? Let's hope not. Let's really hope not. Planes, please get over here. Where the hell are you guys? Come on, please get, out. get over here, please. Oh, you go. Oh, you're not. Oh, you're going to go that way. That makes a lot of, maybe more sense. Uh, they're currently flying. They're around Italy right now. West Indies requires gun shipment. With the government of the West Indies has requested a thousand rifles from the Great War as a means to raise an army. As of now, the West Indies has trouble gaining a considerable force due to the limited trading of their army and lack of gun production, so our help on this matter would be greatly appreciated. Why not? We're out of guns anyways. We might as well give it give them whatever we don't have. And something's going on. Ennui, China has exploded. 
Sweet. Oh, wow, this is really going to help out, huh? Marshall Wu Paifu backs on Queen. Cool. Not sure this is going to really help too much, though. If I can't take that, we're kind of screwed. Come on, India. Don't lose. French true loyals restore the monarchy. Will it change anything, though? Okay, well, let's see what happens. Uh, and the bombers, of course, are a little slower. That's okay. Now, they're going to get attacked. But hopefully they got enough air defense that can help fight down or blow up enemy planes. So we got that. I want to make sure that our light cruisers are actually very good, so we can get some improved light guns for now. Oh, we're doing just a slight smidgen of damage. Getting probably a slight smidgen of air XP. Just a very slight smidgen. Oh, wait, hold on. Were we able to grab this? Yes, get over here. You should actually be able to help out Restoration of Democracy in Australasia. That sounds pretty good. Interesting. And now we should be able to fight up enemy planes to a degree. Uh, what do we have over here? Suppress the, suppress the exiles. High popularity of the king is low. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll, whatever. I don't really know what that's going to do anything. But, oh, Mosley. He looks so flamboyant there. Oh my goodness. I am... I'm excited. More propaganda. That actually might not be bad. How much do we get right now? We get... Gallo sees the control of Ecuador. Point, point 0.6 a day. God dang. That sucks. Oh, it looks like India's not doing too bad. They're beating back the Afghani menace. The writ of election issued. The House of Commons has issued the writ of election, calling for general elections to be held in October of this year. Both the Liberals and the Conservatives have already begun campaigning, and the general sentiment is that this election will be an important one. Does the country push harder towards confrontation with the Uni Union of Britain, or does it take a more cautious approach and focus on building up Canada's strength and that of the other dominions? The Liberals favor the latter, while the Conservatives and the British exiles heavily favor the former. May the best party win. I want the Liberals to win, because I want to build us up some more. You know, I, I, I like both sides. Let's do both. Yeah, we're definitely... Helping these guys out. Look at that. Hey! Green air! I love it. The first international congress. An interesting development, of course. And hopefully now we have more goods to use. Joins Imperial Scientific and Academic Council. More political power. Uh, I want to beeline for that one quickly. Just so that... Oh, we can build stuff. That would not be bad. I, we need to build ourselves up. We get more construction speed. Yes, yes, yes. Even though we can't do too much with it, but create the IEDC. Suggestions have been made to form an Imperial Economic Development Council to expand the industrial strength of the Entente by having its members work together on economic matters. Funded by Canada, the strongest remaining member of the Empire, the IEDC would serve to help us meet the challenges ahead. So, like I said, my goal is to have a strong army. Not a huge army, but a strong one. Build around corporations, huh? What does this do? Oh, we get factories? Oh, I want to, but I... Oh, I want to get early mobilization. The Moyne Commission, with the recently de degraded state of the West Indies economy, causing an organized labor movement within the region. This has been a cause for some concern on our part. The Canadian people have always felt close to these within the West Indies Federation. Due to a similar upbringing from colony to a British-led federation, increasing their desire for formalized search into the region and its problems. This has resulted in the formation of the Moyne Commission, uh, expected to go around to each colony within the federation and see exactly what their problems are, starting in the colony of Guiana. The officials in charge of this are Walter Guinness, the first Baron Moyne as lead, Dr. Mary Blacklock, who works in tropical medicine, Professor F. Eng Engledo, who has expertise in agriculture, economist Hubert Henderson, Sir Percy McKinnon, who is representing Canadian financial interests, female liberal politician Cora Taylor Kesselman, noted anti-social trade unionist Walter Citrine, first Baron Citrine, and finally conservative politician Alf Ralph Ashetin, Together, their objective is to, investigate, is to investigate the problems in the West Indies starting a week from now. Let's hope our worries unfounded. Nice. Because I really want to get to at least early mobilization, get more fuel, get more consumer goods, a 20% bonus of military construction speed. Please, please, please let me get there. Oh, come on. You guys are doing... You can do better than that. Come on. Come on. Actually, do I... Hmm... We have fighters, but we don't have any cast. Cast would be good, but not... It would be okay. Good luck, Your Holiness. Just, come on. Just... Just doesn't circle, though. Just get right there. There's only militia. India. For the love of God. India, please. Actually, hold on. Request Lindley's Expeditionary Force. Send two divisions. 
Oh, crap. Oh, wait. They get to use my divisions. Oh, crap. That was probably a bad idea. No, 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 no. <laughs> Bennett accuses liberals of inaction. With the effects of black money being still felt in Canada, R.B. Bennett has taken the offensive and accused McKinsey King and the liberals of gross inaction, not only on economic management of the country, but on what he suggests is an inevitable war that will determine the fate of not only Canada, but the entire world. Canada, he says, should be pushing hard for the coming war and suggesting that if we if it fails to do so, the Entente shall be caught once again in a weak and indefensible position. Considering the large crowd he attracted at his latest speech in Halifax, there are a large number of Canadians who agree with him. Is that so? Oh, crap. Look what you did, man. Can't you at least keep one airbase? American demands war... Oh, crap. At least we got that one. So, it came as a surprise to the Canadian government, but the ambassador from the U.S. has demanded that the Canadian government immediately begin repaying the war debts incurred by the British Empire during the Belt Krieg. While the Americans are gripped in economic crisis, one Canada has to an extent avoided. They must know the Canadians can never repay the debt, not at all, at least. Though the old UK was on its way to repayment, there was a tacit agreement that the British Revolution, that the debts wouldn't continue to be repaid until the home islands were recaptured. For the Americans who demand it now, they must either be desperate or must be catering to the more warlike and isolationist elements in the government. Whatever the reason, we cannot do as they demand. I like that we act there's no alternative. Like, I always play, or not always, but I usually play as one of the factions, you know, as America. But uh, it's interesting to see that there's no other option there. So the 36 Stanley Cup. Two teams have made it to the 36th Stanley Cup Finals. The Toronto Maple Leafs making their sixth appearance, and the Detroit Red Wings making their second appearance, and still hungry to win the first cup. With only a brief interruption at the first game in Detroit, with demonstrators by the Socialist Party of America disrupting proceedings outside the stadium, the series has gone off without a hitch and captivated audiences in both countries. Who will take home the cup this year? Come on, Toronto! I'm not sure. As an American, I feel conflicted. Hey, there we go. Toronto wins the Stanley Cup. So, Toronto's vanquished Detroit in a four-game series for the Stanley Cup, bringing the Canadian team their fourth victory in the finals. Once again, the kid line of Charlie Cockner, Harvey Busher, Jackson, and Joe Primo has brought the Stanley Cup to Toronto. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. Oh my gosh! Why did you get encircled there? Why? Why do you pain me like this? India, why? Seriously, man, why? Did our divisions go there or something? Where are they? Oh, let's go do this before the war ends. Nice. The coronation of King Edward. King Edward VIII is the first British monarch to not be coronated within the halls of Westminster Abbey. Instead, royal planners are held in an elaborate ceremony in Christchurch Cathedral, Ottawa's largest Anglican church. There, the Archbishop of Canterbury, himself a British exile, performed the rites as expected by tradition, with a throng of media paying attention closely to every move. Rather than making his first public appearance afterwards on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, King Edward insisted appeared on the balcony of Redou Hall, the royal, the official royal residence, where he was greeted by a throng of enthusiastic or enthusiastic Canadians. Oh, there's no H there. It's official! Cool. Hey, this is broke out. That's good. For now. A little bit of lag. And we're out of fuel. Well, we'll help out the Americans just a wee bit. Just a wee bit more fuel. Let's go home and repair. Since we have no fuel. I should have thought of that a little earlier, but whatever. Wow, that map is not ideal. And we can't even... We can barely make ships because we have no steel. Let's go and repair stuff for now. That's fine. Where did my planes go? Wait, hold on. Basic medium tools. Oh, they're still there. That's good. And they actually can help out now because they have maybe a little bit of fuel. That's good. And over here, let's grab some dispersed output because I always grab that. That's always very nice. Only 52. 42 factories, I mean. Ooh, that is... Oh, crud. So the IEDC crew. The Imperial Economic Development Council has been formed in order to foster greater economic cooperation between, within the Entente. At the Canadian government's direction, members of the Entente may be invited to the IEDC, where they will be prompted once a year to make an investment of political power into its pool, an investment that the games them access to the IEDC's advisors. That pool of political power is spent by the head of the IEDC to invest back into its members. An excellent initiative. Great. Oh, no, that's not great. We lose political power. Um, Can we do any other decisions before we lose political power first? Oh, yeah, let's do a royal visit. Address to the Entente. We'll just add war support to the, to the Dominion of Canada and all allied countries based on King Edward VIII's current popularity. Hmm. Suppress the exiles, okay. Begin a royal Canadian tour. Increase will for King Edward VIII. Increase stability. War support, mobilization, speed, and army morale for up to a full year. Hmm. Uh, what do we did visits? Or we could just build stuff. Let's build stuff instead. I think that'd be pretty good. Civilian factories. Or more war support. Let's build up our civilian factories first. Oh, I guess we're going to do one at a time. That sucks. Uh, okay, you know what? We'll just do address the Entente. I don't want to lose political power, so let's do that. Cool. Excellent initiative. 
So, FFC, CCF, appeals to the unemployed. The recently formed Cooperative Commonwealth Federation, party led by J.S. Woodsworth, has been making large gains in the polls as Woodsworth speaks to groups un of unemployed laborers and factory workers across the country. The party's democratic socialist platform has resulted in accusations of it being funded and run by syndicalist sympathizers, but its message of alleviating the suffering of farmers and workers under capitalism has hit a chord even so. Regardless, its popularity seems most concentrated in Western Canada, and the idea it might have a chance at forming a government is remote. That is not ideal, but we have that done. Very good. Uh, modify the Great Depression even more. I'd love to do this. But, you know what, There, I know this is a special event which could affect us for the rest of the game. I don't remember too much about it, but it's regarding conscription, so... The Great Depression is not really to hold upon us yet, and so we have hordes of unemployed men across the country, living in poverty or turning into crime. Our best answer is to gather these people together in economic relief camps. There, they will receive a wage and food to eat, and they can be put to use across the country as a ready labor force. Looks pretty good, not bad. And construction speed goes up. I love it. Now we only afford that, which is not ideal. Really, really not ideal. You know what? Just repair everything you possibly can right now. That's fine. Do you have enough fuel? Actually, let's see. Where is that page? Oh, crud. Uh, intelligence agency. So we could talk about that if we really wanted to. I don't really care about it right now. Logistics. Air. Focus heavily on the air. They have to get the fuel so they can help out the war here. Hey, they actually made an encirclement. Ah, oh, India. I love you. But where are my divisions? Where are those two divisions I gave you? Oh, actually, were they the tank divisions I gave them? Oh, don't tell me it was. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, good. Oh, and you actually have some uh, command power? Infantry? Yes. Yes. Good. Gosh, we could really use more ar army XP. I could have sent divisions. I mm. Hmm. You know what? By the time they get there, they're not. the war will probably be over, honestly. Let's be real. Let's talk about it. Improve light guns? Nice. Very good, very good. I like the guns. I want to make sure that we... We could build up Dreadnoughts, but we're really going to focus on capital ships. That's not too bad. Research speed? Okay, let's grab some reinforced rate. That's always good to grab. Ah, the Moyne Commission returns! Has officially returned today, and the news is not especially pleasant. We've received reports of what they refer to as slavery in a different form, with the plantation economy still being the main form of development within the islands. Among this are many other problems like the United Fruit Company promoted prostitution in Jamaica. What's wrong with prostitution? Eh? What? what? Class divides in Guyana between Indo and afro Guyanese, oil spilling in Trinidad and Tobago. Walter Guinness himself said that this generation is suffering from a century of neglect from the Empire, and they expect the West Indies government to handle the problem immediately. Needless to say, many Canadians are disgusted by the happenings in the West Indies. Those who see... Who they see are very similar to them in many ways. It has left a stain on the imperial family and the current government, one that the West Indies will hopefully erase soon for us. Well, in the compromise with America? So there's been a break in the Chile relations with the American government since their demands for a debt repayment. They've approached us with an offer, economic assistance now, an agreement to increase trade with Entente in exchange for the rest of the debt being delayed until the home islands are taken, or retaken, which was, aside, aides point out, the original deal to begin with. It might be a better way to restore goodwill with our southern neighbors and even help them, though some are suggesting that there's no point in shoveling our limited funds into a bottomless pit. America's lost, they say, and we should look to our own first. They're on their own. Uh, this is painful. I don't. I don't want to do this, but we're gonna need America, probably, because right now I mean we can. I can make ourselves look really good, like really, really good. But it's gonna take some time, and we'll do the best we can. You guys are we doing okay here? Or? I mean, there's no battles going on. That's okay. I'm only sending one group down, especially th these guys. King Edward's address. He addressed the nations of the Entente by radio, calling on them to dedicate their, dedicate their common forces towards a war effort. We are an alliance of nations tied together by tradition, yes, but also by common interest in freedom and the good of mankind. Ours is a noble purpose, and we give thanks each day that allies of such a stout heart still remain, and still fight against a weary tide of oppression and cynicalism. We must hold our heads high and know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. This war will have an end, and we must see it through together. Long live the king. The conscription debates begin. Oh, God, no. As expected, the most contentious issue in the election is proving to be that of conscription. Both the Liberals and Conservatives have proposed a bill that has become known as C-7, which would shape our preparations for war over the coming years. Whether Bill C-7 includes conscription, however, is a key element. French Canadians in Quebec are vehemently opposed to the idea of general conscription forcing them to fight in a British war, and thus Liberal promises of not implementing it have seen them make great gains in that province. Conservatives, meanwhile, say that Canada doesn't have the manpower to fight any war without conscription. The war, when it means, and when it comes, means conscription sooner or later, and they say, for all our sakes, it should come sooner. Oh god, that does not sound good at all. That I am mm, not happy about that. Hey, it looks like they're actually doing very well here. See, by the time we get there, it's going to be all over. Oh, we are so out of political power. But we got conscri construction, which is nice. 
If we did resource efficiency gain, that wouldn't actually be bad for us now. Land Doctrine, you know what? I'll let you guys decide. Should we focus on Mobile Warfare or Superior Firepower? I like both, but this will determine whether I go very heavy into tanks or go very, very, very heavy into Marines and Infantry and Mountaineers, because I want to focus on either one of those th two groups. Tanks or a very strong Marine Special Forces type of group? Let me know in the comments below, which one should we go? Superior Firepower or Mobile Warfare Doctrine? But that's going to end today's episode right there, because it's gone on for quite a bit of time. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this very first episode as I learn how to play as Canada. Subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, leave a like if you liked the video like I said, and I will see you tomorrow as we will hopefully finish off this war in India. Thanks for watching though, and have a great rest of your day.